Hi, I am Don. And I am Stillbo. And we're back to Xeno Gears. Finally. Yeah, God's Finally. country. I've been God's country, literally. God's country. <laughs> made by God, for God. Only, yeah. <laughs> Except for Weltall, who was made to destroy God. Yes. Uh, that, and that, was... that upsets Faye, even though I don't think Faye's a very religious fellow. No, I think he's just like, well, at that point in the story, he was just, you know, dropped in a cave. Oh, yeah. And now he, he's talking to an old guy. He has a about, lot going on at that point. If, he, if, if I'm in a grocery store and some guy starts talking about killing God, like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, no, pun uh. in, no pun intended. I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be here a while. I mean, I can't just, I'm just going to be nodding my head. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we are in the, uh, the kingdom of Shavat. Not yes. to be confused with the Kingdom of Solaris, even though there's a lot of stark similarities. Yeah, it, uh, um, they both float. They're both mm-hmm. highly technologically advanced. Um, but one is uh, the benevolent upper class, and one is the, um, yeah, the um, hateful upper class. Yeah, the Queen of Shabbat, uh, she is... Um, there's no real good analog for her. She is a benevolent queen who doesn't really engage with being a queen all that much. Apparently, this is like some kind of commune. Right. There, there's some right. constitutional m- hijinks going on. And there's everyone's really hyper-educated, so you know they have a liter- liter- literacy program. Oh, a very which good means literacy program. Which means that they're evil. <laughs> I mean, we established this. <laughs> we established this here recently yeah, in the news, actually. You, you do not <laughs> monologue about past events. You, don't, you, you do not have a hyper-awareness of <laughs> mythological wars with Diabolos without... You know, communist literacy program. What's funny is we were we, we like we just got done talking about this. It hasn't been that long, and Xenogears is so convoluted. I've already forgot <laughs> all of that. Yeah, like I, uh, as you're walking through Shavat, random people will start talking about the ancient yeah, history and, of uh, the world. And it, the games make at this point the game and its world is making a lot more sense, but still, there's more we need to find out. Yeah, and um, brass tax is Shavat used to be on the ground. Well, technically, it used to be at the top of Babel Tower. Yep. And, and uh, it was ruling, well, it was guiding the land dwellers and a revolt against Solaris. Mm-hmm. And then at the climax of that war, something weird happened. A bunch of, a, a third party of Diabolos gears attacked. and only Which they didn't have gears before, correct? No, they yeah, did. These are I the believe, first gears? So I think they had gears. They, they mentioned gear battalions from Solaris. Okay, no, yeah, because these are the... I know where Diablos yeah. is going. Yeah, I remember. And uh, anyway, Solaris and the Land Dwellers Revolt kind of has to be put on hold to fight them off. And then Roni Fatima, the Queen, and some other heroes from the ancient past 500 years ago band together. They have their JRPG. <laughs> That Which we don't should have been see. made into a game. Like honestly, yeah, I would have played the I, hell out of that I'd game. I played the shit out of that game. Yeah. Ever get a, it's, it's ready made for you. The, uh... But anyway, um, you're also uh, everyone's spouting that local history. There's that whole room full of choo choos, mm. um, and the queen is very very guilty about something that happened with Nissan 500 years ago. Um. She didn't get the oil changed and blew up the motor. Uh, yeah, that uh, uh, ooh. Ooh. melted the bearings. Ooh. Melted the bearings. Yep, and uh, you know when the lifters, when when you got the uh, just you don't. She didn't use a fuel oil mixture for a chainsaw. <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> this is why we need to go electric. <laughs> uh, again, be sure to what what was our website? Coal is what. We had a website about the evils of coal. We haven't mentioned coal is too valuable to burn. People are going to start thinking coal is good if we don't keep on it. Like, like every day, coal goes into a holocaust of fire. (laughs) When it could be, it could be used for steel mills. Steel mills, uh, it's good coking product. It's a good coking product. It's wasteful for energy. Oh, it's very wasteful for energy. It's good for coking though. Uh, yeah, so keep the mines open, but quit yeah. burning it. And you, you know? can also convert it into diesel fuel, which is low sulfur, which is a good transitional fuel. Oh, absolutely. But it's absolutely pointless for point for power generation. Absolutely. Absolutely pointless. Absolutely. And uh, outdated, yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, speaking of outdated, you know how that... Uh, there's this history about Shabbat that ever since that war, Solaris and Shabbat just stopped fighting and kind of stared at each other. Until they, they, it stands to reason they pass each other in the sky. Yeah, often. like it, it stands, stands to like reason they side eye each other like Luigi on Mario Kart. But Shavat has this excellent barrier. Yeah, just this like obscenely good barrier. Just like Solaris, only and it means that no one can interfere with the other. So, and uh, the ultimate cold war. Yep. And right as you enter, somebody says to this day, no Solaris agent has been able to sneak aboard attack. 
to this day. <laughs> At this day, oh. Solaris has managed to sneak a saboteur, <laughs> and, and, which has brought down the shields enough for an aerial attack. And Maria, the girl who is um, not Margie, a, a little, another little girl who pilots Sebzin, yeah. Yeah. Um, she has gone down to get Sebzin. And the queen says, you need to go follow her to uh, help fight off the Solaris attack. Because the shield generator is down, we got to get to Sebzin's hangar. Unfortunately, that shutdown has also cut off all the normal pathways to the hangar. So you Dungeon have, time. You have to go through an unused, derelict hallway. Uh, that Shavat, apparently Shavat has tried to redevelop this place. What, what was with JRPGs from 95 to 2000 and every dungeon being a pain in the ass. It's a very pain in the ass dungeon. I think Final Fantasy VII is the only one that's not because the dungeons actually look like what these places would look like. Yeah. And the pathways feel... But, <laughs> like, these are just... Con- like, why the hell is this pathway to this motherfucker so hard? It's like... <laughs> like why did they do this? Like, 500 years. It's like I get, it's like I get lost in the Ohio River, wake up 500 <laughs> years later, GE plant's still there. <laughs> and now it's full of lizard people. <laughs> Nothing like what, like it, so Shavat. It does specifically say someone specifically says that Shavat tried to redevelop these dungeons, mm-hmm. but it's hard to get millennials to move to a place <laughs> crawling with monsters. <laughs> they just want everything ruined. God yeah. damn those millennials! Like uh, so now this 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 is a tight winding hallway, and you have Mar- Maria in your party. Mm-hmm. She is not very good at ground combat because she's a little girl. And I don't think she ever will be. Like, you can't no. level her into that. She yeah. can, however, call in Sebzin, which you're trying to get to, to <laughs> punch for her. Now, I don't know exactly <laughs> the mechanics of how Shiva, of how Sebzin <laughs> appears in combat and then goes back to his hangar. <laughs> which is inaccessible. Need, because you, <laughs> you're trying to get to Sebzin, but he comes to you to help you get to him. I don't know. <clears throat> Faye just calls back, damn, uh, it's really hard to get to Sebson. Call <laughs> Sebson in to punch his way This is one of those things where it doesn't make sense, but I'm okay with it because the game is fun, and it, when, it breaks, and when it breaks, Absolutely. it's funny. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, some of these monsters are really cool. Like, there's, like those lizards. They're frozen in carbonate. They're called the Forbidden. Mm. And if you don't beat them fast enough, they break out of carbonate, which... Makes it worse. It, it's, like the assumption is that Shavat has just been finding these things, freezing them in carbonate, and sticking them in dungeons. Right. Because <clears throat> who they, wants to deal with them on the streets, you know? Yeah. Property values and all that. Also, hanging out in this dungeon is Joe, because of course. Because of course. <laughs> and he is, <clears throat> he says, Don't bother me. I'm thinking about life. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by lizard people. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> God bless you. God uh, bless I love you, Joe. Creation staff. So uh, it turns out Dominia is back, and she's the one that shut down the shields. And she do honest, we do we get an explanation? Did she literally just slip in when she you guys slipped went in? in when you yeah. guys went in? Because uh, she like it's the competence factor. You can't actually she can't actually beat you outside of a cutscene, <laughs> but she can also do cool, other cool things in a cutscene, right? <clears throat> to establish that she's a threat. Honestly, the party should just file a restraining order at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. Because she just keeps showing up. Dominia says that Sebzin belongs to Solaris because Solarian Capital paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, we could make a very valid argument that land dweller slave labor built Sebzin. <laughs> but that's not valid. Dominia also recognized Maria, and she says, Hey, Maria Balthazar. Balthazar? Balthazar. <coughs> oh, you need my. To get, uh, she um, says, you need to come with us. And then Maria says, uh, no, I'm not going to you. I'm not going with oh you. Oh, my God. This game came out in 98. <laughs> this is an Elian Gonzalez story. Mm, oh, my is. God. And immediately. You guys remember him? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, he's not little anymore. He's a grown ass man. Yeah, he's, a, he's in the communist uh, po- parliament for Cuba now, I think. Yeah. He's so a, that, that story had a happy ending. Yeah, he's, he, he, yeah. He, he's doing better than I am. He's doing a lot better than I am, brother. <laughs> he's got 15 views on his videos. <laughs> 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 but we're gunning for you, Elian. We're coming for you. As in, to beat you in videos. Uh, good for you otherwise. We'll exile you to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put that up. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy I mean, either. Cuba at least is going to stay above, afloat. <laughs> Florida, it's got some leaks. <laughs> 
Anyway, me, uh, just because Dominia is a bit of um, an asshole, she immediately tells Maria that she has a cursed secret for her gear. Uh, Sebzin is cursed. She has. There's some n- gnarly shit that went into it. Uh, Solaris wants better gears, and no matter how good the pilot is, there's always a time lag between human and machine interface. Nikolai, uh, Maria's father, was very good at cranial nerve systems. He started merging humans and machines. Maria says this doesn't sound like something her father would do, although she admits he would probably find it perversely awesome. <laughs> this doesn't sound like something Dad would do, but although if he did. would, if he saw it on the History Channel, he'd sit and watch. <laughs> <laughs> Dominia explains that this is largely what this whole war is about combat data that's why there's the the gladiatorial games in Kislev that's why Ave and Kislev have been provoked into war with each other and kept at a stalemate yeah. for a hundred years correct? For yeah something yeah. like that to create data to, to give data for human machine interface to create the perfect weapon so first, this bishop gives us all this exposition. Now, Dominion, now Dominion, like everyone does it. I, I'd like I could just see like Ramus just being like, "Son of a bitch, will you guys shut up?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, consult your combat manuals, and then there's just a monologue about <laughs> your organization <laughs> <laughs> that you have to recite. Also, the Wells, the mutants, were a part of this attempt to merge man and machine. A failed attempt. A failed attempt. Yeah, like uh, you had like. On the one end, you're trying to make machines more human. You're trying to make humans more machine. You're trying to figure out how to manipulate both to make them work together. They should have just watched Blade Runner. Yep. Honestly, why do all that? Just watch the Blade Runner. The perfect union of man and machine. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a quote, a, qu- a quotable monologue. That is how special humanoid mutants, Wells, were born. Wells were created in Solaris, were tested on the surface, only that only the wells that passed the tests were dismantled, restructured, and reborn. They became the gear's central consor- control circuit and became part of the machine. It's all the result of your father's great research. Sebzin is the prototype of a man-machine fusion gear. In other words, Sebzin was completed at the cost of innumerable land dwellers' lives. But Solarian capital, bear that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> And in the nerve circuit of Sebzin lies. But before she can complete this monologue, Jesse shows up and tells her to shut up. <laughs> I just uh, imagine that Jesse is this old cowboy guy. He's like, hey, quit your nope, yapping. Nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> Dominia. Dominia is outraged that Josiah is working for Shabbat. Jesse laughs and says that only Maria can use Sebzin so she can just fuck right off. Dominion decides, well, I've accomplished 98% of my mission anyway, so <laughs> I guess I'll leave. That's an A-plus on the uh, Solarian grading scale. Yeah, I didn't get Sebzin, <laughs> but I did open the door to breaking this deadlock. So lock. Sebzin, I suppose, is Maria's father. M- Maria. Uh, I, uh, I think there's another gear with Maria's uh, with Nikolai. So it. that's just extremely Evangelion right there. Yeah. It's just like, like straight It was up, made by her yeah. father using the lives of countless innocents. Yeah. But it, it's key to Maria. Um, meanwhile, Saiten announces that there are four gate there are four gate generators keeping Shavat from arbitrary cutscene annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> like they've been compromised, so there's an attack force on on there, but Solaris can't just wreck the entire thing right now. The gate, the shields are still up. They just kind of flicker. And there are four separate raid groups. Now, you'd think that Shavat would have a militia or something. I think we're supposed to assume that they're busy. Right. (laughs) Uh, Either that or they've just decided that Antifa is wrong to punch Sky Nazis. (laughs) Like, if if Nazis start marching in Portland, you're supposed to just sit there and watch. Because, you know... It's, it, if you ro- punch them, you're violating their First Amendment rights, and you're the real Nazi then. Yeah, it's like a werewolf. That's if you shoot one with a silver bullet, you become a werewolf, <laughs> which is not how that works. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'd be, that'd, be, that'd be messed up. That'd be a messed up movie, but it's not how the canon works. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember how, you remember what happened to Van Helsing? He turned into a werewolf, not because, mm-hmm. because he was bitten by one, not because he stabbed Dracula. Right. But we don't know that. But we don't... They, they, I don't know. That movie was... A long time ago. I was, don't have the date on it. That was in high school. That was uh, Viggo Mort. No, it was uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yep. yep. Yeah, and yep. Frankenstein was Frankenstein's monster 
was a hero. R- right. Don't say Frankenstein because we're going to Dr- get a ton of comments on yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, Dr. Frankenstein built his monster with um, Lithuanian capital. So Dr. Frankenstein, <laughs> who built it with Lithuanian capital but held it still in his own home, yes. was the real monster. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the parts of the workers. Mm. 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 Frankenstein. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, let's see. Faye, however, is, um, you know, he's got himself pulled together. He's like, hey, I'm ready to stand up and finally fight and fight these guys. Like, I, this is what my dad would want. And honestly, I've made a judgment. Shabbat may be annoying, but they're not Sky Nazis. <laughs> like, I don't want to live in this hippie commune, but yeah. if I had to pick between it and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to punch these people. They're, they're, they're not doing anything. They're not hurting anyone. They listen to really cool music, you know, yeah, like nothing I, else. A lot of fish going on. And um, anyway, presumably somebody filled in Billy on who, uh, Faye on who Billy is, because technically he's been unconscious for right, most of the game right. at this point. Um, however, and Faye never actually got to see Billy's gear. So Bart probably just sold him on, you know, it has a cake. It has a cape, a pope hat, and machine gun arms. <laughs> And Faye's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. This that's, guy seems yeah, cool. Yeah, that's all right. That's <laughs> all right. All right. He, can ha- he can happen. He can, he can help. Choo Choo is also saying, yeah, I want to help defend Shavat as well. Faye says no because You're a what? cute little cuddly. You're, you're, a, you're a Furby. Furby. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Furby. Furby. Uh, but Choo Choo says, I'm at that dangerous age right now. <laughs> I don't know who wrote the script for Zeno Gears, but like it is a cr- like it is a crime that this man never wrote movies. I know it is a cr- or this woman. I'm sorry, this man or woman. Yeah. It, it's a crime. Uh, Maria tells Choo Choo that there are other Choo Choo's on Shabbat. Apparently, Choo Choo did not know that. Um, so Choo Choo has sh- uh, like forced herself into the party at this point. Saiten breaks down a battle plan. There are three weird combinations of gears and foot, sh- foot, sh- foot soldiers with various gimmicks. Mm-hmm. And one really big gear that Jesse is kind of worried about. Oxen, a gear, quote-unquote, piloted by Nikolai himself, is hanging out outside the window insulting everybody's IQ <laughs> and being a colossal prick. So, like, we've got Ben Shapiro in a giant gear outside right now. <laughs> and you'll agree with me yeah. that uh, we can't shut Simpson him. was built. With <laughs> look, I tried to, I tr- look, I tried to fix my YouTube uh, recommendations, but Prager U just keeps showing up <laughs> in the adverts. Dude, what the hell is with that? They're everywhere. Like, look, I'm Dennis tr- Prager need like he's gonna go broke spending money on ads. I know. <laughs> like, like, like uh, Dennis Prager is just outside my window in a giant gear talking about how um, why. The s- just about how the Nazis might have had a point if you listen to them. Like, why the fuck do I know what Dennis Prager's fucking dog's name is? Yeah. Why do I know this? Because he's everywhere. I, I know his dog thinks that nationalism, nationalism is okay as long as you don't, you know, build highways or anything. <laughs> uh, Maria's trying to rationalize that her dad just kind of grew up in a different time. You know, like he's he's hey, old. He's from an older generation. You know, that didn't mean that back then. You know, like That's we didn't we didn't know that IQ tests aren't really that effective at determining intelligence so much as <laughs> pattern recognition. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the really cool part of this is that you need to get your party divided up to fight off these different uh, gear combinations. Mm-hmm. You have to appeal to their different strengths. Um, you have to think, basically. Yeah. You, got, you, yeah. Got, like, not, you can't just rely on the main character. You have to figure out who yeah. in your party is... like. Like I guess you could use steer to just tank a few hits, but he's so slow. Right. And like, uh, unfortunately, Rico is really slow. I I don't remember using Rico a whole lot in the games because of yeah, that. I like him, but I he, like I love his character, but his the actual gameplay mechanics of him I didn't care much for. Oh, and um, shocking, Saiten has agreed to help out. <laughs> however, he has, <laughs> however he has been out of action for so long that his gear has not been upgraded. And forever, so you don't need him right now. 
He's hey, been... I'll help this time, but you're not going to use this. Oh, damn it. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, I've got my golf uh, uh, Wait, where's your uh, Chevy? Oh, I got my golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, I said I would. I said I would. So I've you... got, I, I do have my sword now. This is a gear battle. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm trying, and it does. you're just not being very receptive. So, <laughs> so you defeat all these wacky mid-boss encounters, this little boss gauntlet you've got. And um, Oxen shows up for the final confrontation. Mm-hmm. And remarkably, a Shavat gear flies out in a cutscene to fight him. Now, I'm picturing the sequence of events that led up to a solitary Shavat gear going up. <laughs> Presumably, every, all the other Shavat gears got wiped out in the initial attack. And, um, because you plan so well your defense. Yeah, but there was one guy. There was just one guy who, like, you know, he'd, he'd planned for a vacation two months in advance, set the time, and he was, like, in his gear by a lake. He had two rods in the river, and he was had to switch out, and he's just enjoying the view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then his, uh, tech, and his phone starts lighting up with texts. So, like, uh, dude, it's crazy over here. We're really <laughs> shorthanded. And he's like, oh, God, I've got, he has, to take, he has to make a decision. I can turn my phone off. I'm on vacation. They he wouldn't be they, held accountable. They he, can't yep. hold me. They, they can't hold this against me. But they're going to call in five seconds. I need to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> they need to. They need to hear this person is not available. So, but he becomes. But he decides to play the hero. He's like, "Yeah, I'm on my way. I'll I'll, I'll come into work." Uh, and um, he gets annihilated immediately <laughs> by oxen. By oxen. The um. Uh, he then, uh, <clears throat> so this is why you know, this is why like it, 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 it's it's how you know the system manipulates the worker. <laughs> I mean, the worker wants to be helpful. It's it's the nature of work. It's the nature of man. Yeah, it's the nature. We, we want to help. Our, we don't want to leave our coworkers le- like high and dry. No, but you know, the boss is happy to use you, but he's also just as happy to lose you. Exactly. Uh. The, and the, he did lose this guy. Yeah, and, and he was supposed to be on vacation. He was supposed to be on vacation. He was retiring in five he, days. Yeah, he, <laughs> not too many people can do that nowadays. <laughs> no, <laughs> this guy was smart with his money. Yeah, he uh, listened anyway. to a lot of uh, that that Ramsey. F- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just after um, that, Oxen unleashes a powerful anti gear psycho jammer. Hell yes, <laughs> which makes gears immobile. I just imagined a bunch of M. Bison's. <laughs> the psycho <laughs> jammer. <Yeah. laughs> Apparently, he can shut down the human-machine interface of other gears. Mm. Mm. So now the party is stuck on foot waiting for this to wear off, but Nikolai's going to kill them before that happens. He is gloating that the flesh is weak, and I'm too cool and logical for human emotions. <laughs> Facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saiten is brainstorming, and he figures out, you know, Sebson is of the same model that Oxen is. Maybe it is immune and capable of fighting him. Worst case scenario, Nikolai takes enough time killing his daughter that everyone else can escape. (laughs) (laughs) Saiten is a master strategist. This is is why he uh, makes the big bucks, you know? Fortunately, there's another hero waiting in the wings. Choo Choo says, I'm going. Maria chases Choo Choo, telling it that it's not, that this is a, get a giant robot and you're a Furby. But then Choo Choo proudly stands atop a tower while Nikolai looks on in this giant gear and says, quote unquote, what's with this astronomically unintellectual low level life form? Oh. Ooh. And Choo Choo says, don't be rude. Let's get <laughs> ready, Choo Rumble, you bad boy. <laughs> Nikolai, <laughs> Mwah, that, just, that is a that is a <laughs> spicy dialogue of meat to ball. Right you see, there. Nikolai forgot one important lesson: <laughs> steel is not strong, boy. Flesh <laughs> is stronger. <laughs> <laughs> now, you need at this point, you need to pause this thing you're listening to <laughs> and bring up flight on uh, flight on Xenogear soundtrack because something amazing is happening. <laughs> Uh, this this music is amazing. It's on every. Uh, I, it was my it was my uh, alarm clock for all of college. Oh, it is much. it is a fantastic. Uh, Zenogear's entire soundtrack is good. 
Uh, the, the, the we are getting ready to <laughs> rumble, man. I tell so, you what. So Choo Choo is standing atop a tower eyeing this giant robot, and Choo Choo starts gathering energy to herself, grows to the size of a gear, and the screen does that explosion bullshit. For the, <laughs> like the screen shatters into glass panes uh-huh. for the battle transition. And now um, Oxen and Choo, a giant Choo Choo are staring at each other. Are in single combat. <laughs> <laughs> like Oxen's just staring in disbelief. Uh, Nikolai starts unleashing all his powerful anti gear weapons, but guess what? This isn't a gear. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect for taking down gears. <laughs> That's your great miscalculation. I am no king. So now a giant, fluffy little <laughs> stuffed animal is beating the shit out of him with adorable attacks, including a butt slam. Uh huh. Uh huh. While missiles and death rain around it. Nikolai finally gets up and admits that this is indeed some crazy shit and maybe native life on this planet really needs more limiters. And most importantly, that he was not ready to rumble. <laughs> he was not ready to rumble. <laughs> <sighs> Fortunately uh, for Nikolai, there is a cutscene coming up which uh, allows Choo Choo to finally receive damage. And uh, apparently getting ass slammed by a Furby is a good motivator to just let it, let it all out. <laughs> So Nikolai goes back into mad scientist mode where he says, quote unquote, I see you're a giant native life form of this planet. You're not a young Rankar, species name Dota-esque, Chu Chu Chapolin, intellect astronomically low. They still <laughs> haven't gone extinct? Through genetic engineering, they're supposed to have been minimized in size. Probably one of the survivors that had their limiters removed by the wise men from Shavat. Intriguing. You'll make an excellent guinea pig. I'll use you for many experiments. The, this is a direct quote, by the way. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, presumably, meanwhile on Shabbat, Faye and Bart are just kind of like watching all this happen, and Faye's like, "Hey, Bart, is this the drugs wearing off, or did that <laughs> thing grow twenty times bigger and fight Maria's robot dad?" And Bart's like, "Dude, I don't even care." <laughs> <laughs> Also, since apparently both the Azukis are terrible parents, Saiten's daughter has wandered <laughs> yards away from this giant battle to encourage uh, to encourage uh, Maria. Oh, Maria! I think Mar- Maria. Yeah, <clears throat> Maria uh, then mounts Sebzin on his like shoulder, like she always. She like, never gets inside. She always She's rides always him, on yeah. the shoulder. And she confronts Nikolai, and he's talking about how awesome he is now, and how glad he is to see Maria. Maria says, Dad, you're being incredibly racist. <laughs> and Nikolai says, Hey, I'm just a race realist. Let's be real. I'm practically God. <laughs> I am practically go- I'm practically God now. And they fight. And after a pitched battle, a voice recording of Nikolai tells Maria that he's actually dead. Uh, his consciousness has been subsumed into Fox News. He's, <laughs> he sat on the couch watching Fox News too long, and this happened. But fortunately, he installed an emergency program into Sebzin in case he got brainwormed. Which, um, and he tells, like, yeah, I'm dead. This program is going to uh, free me from this metal prison, and it's also going to unlock your graviton cannon ability. <laughs> and uh, unlike uh, Jesse, Nikolai does not show up after being cutscene killed by his own offspring. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, after this, uh, after Oxen is destroyed, Shavat is saved, and the party is talking to Queen Zephyr. And she's decided that, okay, maybe we can't just leave Solaris hanging around like this. Um, we should probably do something. Unfortunately, it's protected by three gates. Very, It's actually protected very well, because we can't even see it with the gates up. One of those gates is under Ethos HQ, but it's unreachable. The other two gates are unknown. Uh, by the way, Ave has just invaded Nissan. And you remember how we implicated Nissan in the uh, <laughs> in that one plan a while back? Yeah. Turns out maybe the chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> 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 um, and Bart's like, I can't imagine why that happened, but <laughs> gosh, that's wild, yeah, I, man. I don't know. Like, oh. Fortunately, the party isn't actually responsible. We've established that this is this is coming out kind of out of nowhere. The queen says the reason they're going to Nissan is because there is an Omni Gear sealed there by Roni Fatima. 
by the way, Shavad has turned Yggdrasil into an airship while this is all happening. Turns out it always was a uh, piece of archaeotech from uh, Roni Fatima's time. And while this is kind of out of nowhere, Bart has no problem at all with becoming a sky pirate. Oh, yeah, why would he? Yeah. And Maria is tagging along. She's with the party for uh, because right now is not a good time for her to be alone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she absolutely. Just, just murdered her robot dad. Yep. Um, also, the queen tells Faye that one of the three sages, Gaspar, has returned. To Shabbat. To Shabbat, yes. The queen and Gaspar uh, have are meeting in secret. Uh, Gaspar says he hasn't seen the other wise men. He only came back to make sure they, quote unquote, <laughs> don't make the same foolish mistakes again. Uh, wise man is also here. Meanwhile, an NPC tells Queen that Ellie was here and it, quote unquote, reacted to her. Hmm. The Queen says she is not surprised. Wise man says the girl does not intend to ride it. Just like her, quote unquote, <laughs> she knows it unconsciously, the existence within her. The queen says she was the same as Sophia, that girl in the uh, painting. At, at Nissan. Yeah. She then apologizes to wise man. But then wise man says it is okay. I am not, quote unquote, him. <laughs> I'm glad the party isn't here listening to this because I <laughs> they'd probably be really confused. <laughs> right. uh, Gaspar says that he has removed the party's limiters, the genetic limiters that all land uh, surface dwellers are subject to to make sure they can't go like Super Saiyan and uh, challenge Solaris. Frieza really probably should have yeah. invested in some of those. Yeah, uh, um, now the party is woke, so they're not limited anymore. Right. Uh, he does this off screen. Which is the best way to do gene therapy. Absolutely. <laughs> there is also another, uh, just to close this episode out, um, you know all those choo-choos in, uh, in Shabbat? Mm -hmm. um, Choo-choo goes to meet her brethren and sisters in this big hall, and there's a bunch of chip chittering and uh, weird noises. And uh, the narration says, and it was a, it was a, it was a long night, happy, hot, and then, well, that's a story for another time. Uh, she uh, was ready to rumble, man. She yeah. <laughs> ready to rumble. Okay, the exact quote I actually did transcribe is, it was natural for them to have a party, and their sweet, dangerous night went on <laughs> and on, like a never-ending dream. <laughs> okay. 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 Attention party members, we have an airship now. Let's get the hell out of here. And the airship made its way to Shavat in through all this. Yeah, the air, like they I guess Shavat like brought it up to them and turned it into an airship. So now we have an airship. The world map is now our bitch, and we need to find three gates to destroy them so that we can find Solaris and destroy it. It's a little convoluted. But it gets us away from the choo-choos. And it really feels like we're coming to the end of a game that we don't fully understand yet. Yeah. But there's good news because we're nowhere near the end of yeah, this we're, game. We're still in disc one. Disc one. Disc one. Um, two. two. But uh, it, two is a very special disc. Two, the, the, <laughs> you're gonna, there's a start. There's something noticeable that's going to happen in disc two. It's going to be more like this and less like a game. We're going to be doing a podcast over a game that is, in fact, a podcast yeah. of itself. Uh, special preview. Um, uh, Bo, how was your day? Oh, you know, it was it was okay. I got up, got breakfast, cleaned a bit. How was yours? It was then that I went to the mass driver unit. <laughs> 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 there was a really cool boss fight, but our budget ran out. <laughs> and then Fort Hurricane showed up. <laughs> <laughs> We're not kidding, by the way. That's really what the second disc is like. But you'll love it. You yeah, will love it. I loved it. Um, as much as you love what's going on right now. Um, yep. And uh, because you love it so much, I know you're clicking subscribe because Adam's staring at me and he knows it's the end. So uh, subscribe, like, uh, share, and uh, transcribe. Transcribe, transcribe onto yeah. clay tablets. Um, that they will last longer than paper. Um, it, and when the EMP... Yep. When North Korea EMPs us for <laughs> no reason. We're worried about uh, Corona right now, though. Corona. Coronavirus. When that scares over, we'll pick another uh, 
a- another country to be frightened of. Um, uh, I am personally leaning toward Bhutan. Uh, you know what? They're the only country in the world that has ha- the happiness rating on their national uh, census. I'm worried about them. Uh, it's no someone to worry about. No, no one's that, no that, happy. One's that so, happy. So, yep, that's uh, they've get, they're hiding something. Yeah, they're hiding something. I mean, so. you, you see, like you know, in every horror movie, every good horror movie, there's like people just walking around smiling, mm-hmm. like they're in on they're in on something. Yep, that's Bhutan. Yep, that's Bhutan. It's racist, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> good job, Bhutan. You did Good it. Job. No, honestly, that's really you cool. You won. They, uh, <laughs> but, yep. And, I give uh, up. This podcast dedicated to Elian Gonzalez. Congratulations yes. on becoming a member of the Communist Party and, and uh, uh, you know, Cuba. Like, uh, long may you li- long may you reign. Long. <laughs>